I trust that uh, people who are watching have looked at, have been uh, attending the last two we've done of these, two or three we've done of these. Uh, it's very much, I've encouraged them all along to speak about reality. And that's what's going to happen in this session. Let's go straight over first to Jeremy from their plant in Ohio. Now, Jeremy, on our discussion on January the 20th, um, we spoke about your progress through the um, way, uh, through the um, the through, and you said that uh, throughput was becoming more of a priority, and therefore you dropped the radar on the fines reduction one a little bit. But you made an interesting comment. You said people tend to think naturally this way. So I said, I begs the question then: How, if people think naturally this way, how can the Toyota Carter patents help them? And you spoke about the. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. You spoke about this slide that uh, we went through in October last year, or these two slides, where you talked about the difference uh, between troubleshooting, which is uh, we're in the middle and we've got all these things going on around us and it's that game of whack-a-mole where we belt the red dots. You spoke about the difference between that and this slide here where we have those things going on but we're heading on the green path. Uh, you said that was one of the significant things that has been able to help you. Can you just tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So like you said, people generally think this way. I believe that. I think they're inquisitive and they want to solve problems but sometimes you're solving problems in a way that's a little haphazard, right? You're maybe picking and choosing things that you think are the biggest problems or however you pick them. And then they don't always line up and you don't really meet a goal. But what I was telling you is the, you know, if you kind of take a step back and everybody kind of aligns their thoughts, you can kind of pick the dots that make a path that get to the goal. And that's basically what the dots are connecting, right? So it's really a way for everybody to align on the path forward. Um, and once you have that alignment, everything else seems a little easier. Everybody kind of starts thinking the same way. Everybody starts bouncing off of ideas and you kind of get there together as opposed to, you know, just haphazardly getting there, like I said. Yeah. Okay. So it gets everyone's, <clears throat> it gets everyone's minds. What I've heard you say is there is it gets everyone's minds thinking on the one destination. You've got all this stuff going on around you, but it channels people's minds in the one uh, to, towards the one destination for, for this week and next week. And then yeah. when we get there, we move on to the next. Is that what, that's how I interpret that. That'd be accurate. Spot on. And have you got any, have you got an example of where that's happened? You know, where you've, where you've, where you've seen that happen within, you know, your sphere, your plant. Yeah. So really a lot of different places, but specific to the waste reduction process that I was working on um, when we first started talking about it, everybody had different ideas and what they thought they should do to improve it, right? They kind of want to do a lot of different things. Um, but really it didn't, you said fines reduction, that's where it ended. It wasn't fines reduction. It was actually uh, getting rid of the large chunks. Um, but what we did is we did some initial experiments based on what the group wanted. And what we find found is that the, we were getting rid of a lot of fines. They weren't going through the screen. That's how the project kind of turned. Once we did that focus and everybody kind of agreed it was fines that we need to retrieve, you know, the good product we were throwing away, uh, it kind of changed how everybody thought about the whole thing. And we actually made some real improvements at that point. Sure. What about, you've, you spoke about, you tend to be, I guess, as a lot of us are, you tend to be um, uh, cost directed or throughput improvement tends to get the priority. Yeah. Have you had any wins in that area recently? Or can you explain any win in that area recently where you felt the the concept of a target condition, in other words, an interim step to align our thinking, has has uh, delivered you know, delivered a win for you? Yeah. So actually, on the same project, I think you you made a comment earlier about it. Uh, it's not really directly production related, right? So it takes a backseat when production needs to be the focus. However. Yes. Uh, it does have an aspect to it, and you kind of have to realize that if we're not getting things through the screen, we're not putting product in there. Um, so really what ends up happening is you have to make sure people are understanding the importance of this. It's not just a waste stream. It's actually a way to make sure your throughput is actually impacted. So if we can get yeah. more product through the screen, we get a bigger chance to get more product into the containers and sell them, right? So you yeah. kind of have to 
you kind of have to realign the same thing. You have to kind of take the dots and connect them for everybody to make sure everybody's on the same page and understands the importance of it. Yeah, sure. So have you actually used the word target condition as a matter of interest or how have you, how have you, if you haven't, what, what have you substituted to fit in there? No, I try to use the terminology just because it's still newer to me. So I try to practice those uh, yes. terms and make sure everybody's using the same common terms. But yeah, like everything else, we have a board out there, we write things on it and we use those terms from the, from the teachings. And the reaction to those terms, you know, it yeah. can be a bit foreign. What's been your experience there? Uh, yeah, a lot of times it is a little foreign. People ask, why do we have to use those terms? You know, why can't you just say goal or why can't you do, do something like that? Um, typically the response is just that way, it just aligns everybody, right? It's everybody's using the same terms and we all know what we're talking about. That way it results in less miscommunications. Yeah, common language. Correct. Yeah, common language. Um, I've got a question, but I might leave that to the end. I think we've touched on it a little bit there from a guy in New Zealand, Clive, and apologies, Clive, if you're on and you're, and I mispronounce this, Clive Generain, I think it is. And it's aligned with what you were just saying um, there, but I'm going to hold that question to the end once we've gone through each of you. But you sort of started to touch on an answer there, Jeremy. But thank you for that. Um, Alex. So last session you were on, you spoke about changeover time and the work you were doing at your plant in uh, Washington State. Mm -hmm. I've got that right, haven't I? The right part, the left side of America. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I get confused between Washington City being on the right and Washington State being on the left. And that confused, I get confused there. Sorry about that hesitation. So can you tell us where you're up to with that and Alex or where that ended up and what you've moved on to and where, where the focus is now? Yeah, so, I mean, just staying on the changeover piece, you know, we, we sustained um, the results in terms of, you know, what, what was that, um, the, the end result we were going for with reducing changeover times. Um, since then, what we've been is, is more kind of uh, the sustaining and, and the maintain the maintenance part of it. So, um, you know, recently we <clears throat> actually over the holidays about two months ago, uh, what we were doing with this changeover reduction is introducing compressed air to do line clearance. Um, and then uh, over the, the holiday period, we had a, an incident where we have um, we're running gummies with with sand and sugar on them and we have exposed um, electrical wiring or electrical boxes with within the, the manufacturing facility so this was a new safety risk that we didn't consider when we were we first implemented the project um, so it's really just kind of adjusting and adapting to kind of new challenges that come up um, so when that issue arose we just kind of took it of okay if, if this is the challenge, then what do we have to do to still make sure that we're doing this safely? And then how are we making sure that we're still um, meeting the change over time? So it's really just kind of been adjusting as, as we've gone. But for the most part, we've been able to sustain the wins. So just uh, an interesting point you've raised there. People often say or often ask, sorry, when you've achieved your target condition or a goal, particularly target conditions, do you move on to the next or... You know, what about, what what do you need to consider in terms of holding that state? So we've targeted a condition, we've got <clears> to that point. Um, what do we need co to consider in terms of holding that condition? And that's, uh, can you speak a little bit about that? What what did you have to do, what did you have to do within the plant or, uh, to hold the conditions that you'd achieved, those goals? Well, for, for one, yeah, for one thing, I mean, just, that specific project and looking at change over times is something that it's it's incorporated into you know our daily meetings our daily you know lean daily management meetings um so we're constantly making sure that we're actually sticking to that target condition and then the other piece of that is the floor is now coming to me and saying you know we need to alter you know this uh this instruction on the safety checklist because it doesn't actually reflect uh, the, how we're using you know, the tools now. Um, uh -huh. So it's really just kind of checking with the floor and managing by exception when, when these problems come up. And then, you know, we haven't been in, in the, the state where now we're slipping back. Um, but, you know, I think if, if we got to that point, we would probably have to, to start doing kind of a new um, coaching cycle. 
Um, but luckily, we're, we're not at that point. It's really just been kind of managing it by exception. Okay. And what's your experience been with the people that you've been working with on that project? Have they, uh, to what extent do you see the development of scientific thinking in their minds? Is that started to happen or is it still very much with you, do you feel? I think it's still with me, mostly. Yeah. Um, I don't think that it's gotten to the point, not formally at least, maybe maybe no, with no. a couple of team members, uh, but I think it's still mostly with, with myself. So is there any, what about informally? Because really at the end of the day, that's we're not looking for, at the end of the day, uh, what we want to do is impart this scientific thinking on others. So we want it to be happening informally. Is there, are you getting any signals of any movement there? And if you're not, you're not. That's No, I think, I think we are. I think what we're still in the stage of is typically there's some kind of thought, Hey, can, can we do this? And instead of um, taking the initiative and running, it's almost still of an asking for permission, you know, Hey, can right. we make this change? Hey, can we do this? Um, we're always going to have to have that layer in some regard. I mean, we can't just, yeah, we're going to make this change and it'd be undocumented. Um, yeah. But I think there's there's still a little bit of hesitancy, almost just to kind of ask the question of, hey, can we can we make this adjustment or this change? Uh, but yeah. yeah, there's absolutely the, the informal pieces. Like people are coming up and saying, when this happens, we have this problem. Can we do you know X? Um, so so that part is a little is reassuring. Sure. Um, we've got a question here from Paul, and maybe you can answer it, uh, Paul Sample, and maybe you can answer it, or any of you answer it. But um, the question is, how did you go about introducing Carter to the site operation? So do you want to speak on that, Alex? Did you actually formally introduce it or did you just go about your ways because you were on the program with us? Did you formally uh, introduce it or did you just uh, surreptitiously just do stuff? So 50-50, um, so right? So, so when we started it, um, I did not introduce it as we're, we're formally doing Carter for this specific project. Um, and the reason being is, you know, people will have a hesitancy to, oh, this is something new that we're doing. There may be some kind of barrier to, I don't want to do something new, or this is too, you know, too formal. And the, the other side of it was I had no experience with it. Um, so I want to just kind of learn, um, you know, through trial and error. As we went along, then I kind of introduced it to, hey, this, this is, you know, what we did. Uh, but at first it was, to me, it's just kind of a psychology thing. If I come in and say, guys, this is this brand new shiny toy we're going to use, there's going to yeah, be some. Yeah. yeah. And Jeremy, you're smiling there. I know we've spoken a bit that, about this before, but for the, for the benefit of the question and those who might have not attended others, what was your experience with that? Yeah, very similar to Alex, right? Like you kind of give everybody an overview of what you're doing but you don't go into too much detail and then you kind of show them as opposed to tell them um yeah I, that's really where it's at it's very similar to alex situation yeah, okay. and, and tony you were nodding as well what's your thoughts on that one <clears throat> well for reasons maybe outside of the question i took a different approach i rolled out there with a big bright shiny storyboard and try to get be like Vince Lombardi an American football coach said, come on, come around me. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. <clears throat> it might've been part of the reason why it failed, but also as we discussed in previous uh, rounds, it, you know, I picked the wrong project to uh, launch Kata on. I think the conservative approach, you know, give the group a problem and kind of guide them to it and circling back around either halfway through the project or towards the end of the project, and say, hey, guess what we just did might be a better approach. Mm. And I think you touched on something important, Alex, where you said um, that you, 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 it's almost, you don't want to go out there with all the bells and whistles when you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah. And I think that's really important. You as coaches, as leaders, you've got to be pretty, pretty clear on what scientific thinking means and feels like before you start uh, a, you know preaching to others and we have got to remember what the patterns are those Toyota Carter patterns are a means of developing other people's scientific thinking um, which may which would imply that you're scientifically thinking yourself first so uh, I think your approach is pretty valid about um, 
uh, you know, going out there and uh, making sure you're scientific, using floor examples to scientifically think yourselves before you can jump in and start using the word and get others along the way. And by the way, this is how we're going to learn to do what I just did, if that's if that makes sense. Jonathan, what's your experience in that area? Yeah, for my part, what have you found? Um, yeah, for my part, the way that I introduced the concept to the particular team that I was working with was just to sketch it out on a whiteboard and they seemed pretty receptive to it. And by the time I got back, they had actually developed a more formal whiteboard for the next meeting. And did the more important, did the whiteboard look what it should look like? Yes and no. <laughs> yeah, so expand on that. And I'm being, I've asked the question in a certain way and done the should bit for a good reason, but but you answer for what, what what's the yes, what's the no part of that? Yeah, so um, the way that it was set up um, was pretty formal. And so, um, you know, had I, you know, my preference is for kind of letting that process play out organically. Um, so they had neatly typed up all of the, you know, the target condition, actual condition, the challenge, um, and it and it made it seem like it was written in stone versus an interactive exercise. So yeah, right. And what are we seeking? We're seeking that interactive exercise. So um, I think what's important with that, and again, I don't know what you found, but as long as whatever, when it starts happening, when people start doing it themselves, as long as we can see the pattern in there of scientific thinking, then that's what really matters. If it doesn't match what I gave you last October, that's not the end of the world or what you see on the, you know, the micro, the website and all that. If it doesn't exactly match that. That's not really the point. What we want to be able to see is evidence of the scientific thinking in there. And so where are you at overall, Jonathan? We haven't spoken for a while. Yeah, we haven't spoken for a while and in the, in the, um, in the spirit of keeping it as real as possible. Yes, um, that's right. We, as I think you're aware, we've had um, a change in site leadership. So our yes. our, um, our site manager who was pretty new to the company was, was let go in the middle of December. We have our old site manager back. And um, actually the team that I was working with has been uh, reprioritized on another project within the plant. Yeah. Um, you know, all of that being said, um, we'll have a lot to talk about in our next coaching session, and and I'll have a new challenge that um, you know we'll focus this team around uh, just a different topic. Okay, good. And but the new the plant manager <clears throat> who's come in is the pre was previously the CI manager for the for, for globally. Global. So yeah, uh, yeah Matt King. So. Um, uh, has that had an impact? Is that is he is uh, uh, is he imposing some of that down? I'm interested to know. No, not exactly. Um, not yet. Not yet. You know, but as you know, he's a firm. You know, he's a firm believer in the Kata methodology, and you know, yes. it, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. And what about you personally? Have you had any particular examples where you've been able to you know, just use that, use some of what you learned last October, even if it's not formal with a storyboard and all that? Have you had anything pop up in the last month or two? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, you know, probably not, not worth mentioning on a call like this that others can yeah. learn from. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And is that just a priority? And this is, it's, this is important because, because if you know. Um, it falls off the radar and that this is reality and I've told you guys I want these to be reality discussions it falls off the radar why it, it has a little bit with you tell us a little bit about that what's the driver behind that yeah so as you mentioned the uh, the site manager Matt who's coming back he's you know he had a, a brief stint at, for about a year as the global CI leader here at Church and Dwight yeah. and you know he he had a chance to get out of the hot seat as a plant manager and to take more of a corporate role. And when he came back, he, he really had um, laser focus on topics that he wanted to tackle as a priority over doing, you know, formal, formal kata. Um, however, some of the things that he has in mind, he certainly wants to tie into um, 
Cata and CSUs see us have a challenge statement around some of these things. Sure, sure, good. So uh, be clear on that direction, if you like. So exactly. I think the message that we can take out of that is that there is for a, to create, where the environment, to have an environment where the chances of success is really high, there needs to be an alignment from plant management. There must be alignment from plant management. I think that's an important takeaway. And something we get off and get asked, how do you make this work? How do you bring it to life? There must be that alignment there. Um, I think, Jeremy, you are the plant manager, aren't you? Am I right no, about I'm that? Not. I'm, I'm You're not. close. I'm, I'm step under, yes. Yeah, a step Operation. under. So, yeah. so how have you addressed that one, Jeremy, with that, with that alignment? Yeah, so I guess to your question, uh, the areas that I oversee, I really do have the authority to kind of direct what's going on there. So really yeah, right. I have the authority until proven I lose control of it. Right. So, yeah. So <laughs> as long as I have methods like Kata to keep control of it, I'm a little better suited to keep my responsibilities. Yeah, sure. Very good. I'll use it to my right. advantage. Yes. Yeah. A bit strategic. Well yes. done. Uh, Tony, on the 20th of January, our last discussion, you said, I believe in the mechanisms of Carter, but it feels so bad for not accomplishing much using its fundamentals. And then, but then you said, now saying that, I think differently about problems in the factory and consciously understand there is a knowledge gap I must overcome. And so can you talk a little bit about that and then uh, give us an example? I would say... <clears throat> Um, you know, like I've heard everybody else mention, and probably with our interaction of uh, the floor staff, most people already have some scientific thinking uh, built in. So uh, the kind of methodology that we did with you in October really just gave me focus, you know, gapping that knowledge threshold, right? We know where we are. We know where we want to be between the actual condition and the challenge. Um, to be able to define the knowledge threshold has given me a little bit of clarity. And really, even if I'm not doing a formal storyboard, uh, you know, just realizing it's a step by step and just doing scientific thinking with the, the plan do check to act before I progress uh, to my next step. You know, you heard Alex talk earlier about. Um, He's in the sustainment piece of his, uh, at the end of his Cotter project. And really uh, our plant management has had some realization. We do a lot of things remarkably well here in Washington. We solve problems, not just with Cotter, but with root cause analysis and other problem solving tools. Our soft underbelly would probably be the sustainment piece, which we've always found hard. And so, Coming into uh, 2023, our plant management is doubling down on uh, another uh, program, TWI, JI. So I'm thinking about the JI, you know, my plant manager has given me a clear vision where he wants to be rolling into Q3 and Q4. I know where we are now. And so now I'm just asking myself, how do I get through this knowledge threshold of the JI program, right? I, I've taken the training multiple times, but it's so much more than training. There's the implementation and the implementation falls in that knowledge threshold. Hmm. I, I think you touched on, uh, you touched on something important. I know it was important to me anyway. One of the, one of the fundamental changes in my approach, um, you know, going back a while and you touched on it just then you said that, um, that what you realize, what you've realized is that uh, rather than we're going to do this, 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 and this over the next few months, it's more of a we're going to do this and we're going to see what happens. And then we're going to do so. What is my next step? And I I don't know what's going to happen beyond that. So let's take that next step and see see what happens. So if that's a success, if that's the way, if your approach has changed towards that. Um, that's a success because my experience is whenever you're developing people or when you're practicing continuous improvement, you're continually stepping beyond the knowledge threshold, even if you don't think you are. You are because whenever you're working with a new group of people, you are. So yeah. that's what I heard you say there is that, that rather than uh, we're going to, here's our project plan, we're going to do this. It's more, 
let's take this step and see what happens. Let's take this step. If, if, if you're starting to have that view, then you're starting to think scientifically. Yeah. You want to comment on that? or? I do, but I also want to say, uh, and maybe this is a, a phenomenon that happens at a church in Dwight, maybe even more so just church in Dwight, Washington. We are really good at planting these seeds for these remarkable programs. And quite often it takes one to two years later for that seed to really come up and find the opportunity to grasp it. So we planted Dakota seeds back in October. And, you know, we started JI in 2018. And here we are five years later realizing we've got this remarkable tool to help solve a problem. So anyone who's listening, I, my, my message is Cotta is a, is intuitive and, you know, there'll be a place in Washington where it'll get the big stage, you know, right now we just got the gatekeepers like Alex and myself and a few others who did the program to keep water in the seed until we need it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're onto something there, Tony. Yeah. So it'll, there, there it'll is have a time and place for Cotta and I'm glad we planted the seeds and we got, uh, you know, sharp minds like Alex and Jeremy already out there practicing and implementing what they've learned. Um, there will be a time. It'll be good yeah, to the do it. The pool a, will come. Yeah. Five years later, it should be the next webinar, Oscar. Where are we at now? <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. So we've got a couple of minutes left. I want to ask that question. Clive, and again, if I get this wrong, the pronunciation, Jana, Jana Rain from New Zealand said, said this. I love the question. People tend to see Carter as micromanagement. How do you change this mindset? Any of you would like to comment? Well, with our shallow pool of experience, I don't know if I've got the credentials that go in too, too much detail, but what I do know is Kata is about including people and engaging the floor. You know, we, we, we say here in Washington all the time, you know, uh, the answers to the problem lie with the people who run the machine centers and who are doing the daily grind. So it's not micromanaging, it's giving them the podium to say i believe i got the next experiment we should do let's try this one first so and if yeah that so is i think from a micromanaging that's right i think you've touched on it there from my view is that your carter is asking a, well the coaching side is asking a set of questions so that the next step is determined and the next step is not random the next step is logical so if if, if you're telling people, if you're telling people how to think or what to do, sorry, if you're telling people what to do, then yes, it's micromanagement. But if you're standing back and using the questions to develop scientific thinking, then I believe it's anything but. So I think it uh, depends on, it depends on the value you put on the coaching questions. What do you, Jeremy, you were nodding there. What's your thoughts on this micromanagement yeah, question? I think what you said really, uh affirms what i was thinking right like it's more of the coaching it's the the guiding to get to where they think they need to go as opposed to telling them where to go right that's really the big difference there yeah because you're not really worried about micromanaging you're worried about the actions affecting you so you try to control all the actions so you don't have any reason for excuses when it doesn't work right and kata it's a little different you're you're trying to align on maybe where everybody thinks we should go, like you said, see what happens and then make another decision from there. You're not really worried about controlling it in the same same manner. Sure. You're what, yeah, like I, I think you said it best. You're waiting for the outcome to kind of reveal itself based on short-term or shorter uh, experiments as opposed to seeing that long-term goal and doing whatever it takes to get there. Yeah, and your role as a coach is to develop these experiments uh, to help is to guide experience within the box of risk. I think I did that a couple of times in October. Now you're guiding experiment within the box of risk. And if that's the approach, then that's not micromanagement. If you're telling people what to do within that box of risk, that's a different story. Then that is micromanagement. Your, your quick thoughts on that, Jonathan, because you're nodding. Yeah. Um, team decides what goes up on that kata board is obstacles. They decide what obstacle to tackle next. You know, if the, it was micromanaging the coach would be dictating all of that so totally agree with what's been said 
Good, spot on. All right, guys, time's up. Thank you very much once again. And we do, Jonathan, I look forward to hearing where you're at at our next, uh, our next catch up. And keep working with this, keep applying it on your own little ways. And we then we'll be getting together again, I think it's in about April for the next series of these half, these half hours. So Jeremy, Tony, Alex has gone away, but um, Tony, please thank him. And yes. Jonathan, much, very much appreciate your input. Have a good afternoon. And uh, Skylar, thank you very much once again. And Bye, everyone. Anyone who's, come, Bye. anyone who's coming to the summit or Catacon, uh, we'll see you there. And Tony, I'll see you there. Yes, yes. sir. Just a All quick right. reminder, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's session. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.